our next and final topic in this series on graphs is going to be what's called the Hamiltonian cycle, a seemingly similar thing to what we found before, the Eulerian circuit, where we're trying to touch every vertex in a graph. This seems unbelievably similar. So let's see if we can do that. This one looks pretty easy. I could go V1, 6, 4, 7, 5, 8, 3, 2, 1. We did it. We touched every vertex and never revisited an edge, which is one of the things that's required for it to be a proper cycle. We can't revisit edges or vertices. This looks benign. However, if you look at the theorem that we have, it says each vertex in a connected graph is adjacent to at least n over two vertices, then the graph must have a Hamiltonian cycle. That is not a great condition. That requires your graph to be almost complete. Every single vertex is touching half of the other vertices. In practice, that's never going to happen. Why is this theorem so bad? Well, let's look at a different example and see if we, how easy it is to find a Hamiltonian cycle within this other example. So a somewhat visually satisfying graph, if I could draw it right, this is called the Peterson graph. It has a name because it turns out to be kind of a jerk when it comes to graph theory. It disproves a lot of theorems that you'd want to do. So starting at the vertex I just colored on the left there, can we find a path which visits each vertex once and only once? Well, let's try. If we go up, then down, then here, then there, then there, then there, then... I can't go up to that, so I have to go down. Ooh, I pigeonhole myself. Hmm. Let's try again. Maybe try to go around the boundary first. We go around, 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 up. Then go here, then go there, then go there, then go... Mm, that's close, but we can't revisit this. So we want to... Uh, maybe we can try to think about this. Maybe we'll try to reverse engineer a way to get to the spot we want. So we want to... Start here, we need to end in one of those other three vertices, so we need to try to find a way to work backwards. I'll let you try to f try this for a little while. Don't try for too long, because it's impossible, but try for a little while. It is worth trying to figure out why this is so hard. It turns out a Hamiltonian cycle is what most computer scientists would call a hard problem. <laughs> uh, with a bit of an understatement, hard problem. That seems easy. There's a lot of these. When we say hard problem, there are various definitions of the word hard actually in computer science. The reason that this is hard is that if you give me an answer and say this is the Hamiltonian cycle, I can check check it very, very easily. I can tell you definitively if your answer was correct easily. But finding it on your own turns out to be unbelievably complicated. No polynomial time algorithm is believed to exist for finding this cycle. It turns out that our best attempts we have ever made are exponential, and we believe that no polynomial time algorithm could ever be found. There are some people which might disagree with that. However, with a normal computer, finding a Hamiltonian path is so hard, every algorithm is above polynomial runtime. So it takes longer than n to the 100, n to the 1000, n to the 4 billion. It takes longer than any of those complexities to find a Hamiltonian cycle in general. So this problem is incredibly difficult, but looks so unbelievably similar to a problem for which we had a complete characterization with a theorem. This is a common problem in graphs and in computer science in general, where problems which look benign and simple and easy at a glance turn out to be effectively impossible in practice. Those problems are called NP-complete problems. There's lots of these that you will learn about if you take more courses in computing. These are things that look very simple, but turn out to be so hard as to be harder than any other problem effectively, with some definition of every other problem. We, you, if you take a second course in analyzing algorithms, you will talk about that at the end of the class.